Every single thing you touch is impacted by your story. As an attorney, as a teacher, as an architect, there is not one line of business that you can be in that a story and a great story won't elevate your outcome. Every single line of business, every single line of service that you're connected to will be impacted and ideally elevated by the level in which you're willing to tell and share your story. So let me give you some guidelines, some parameters, what I like to call the bumper rails, as if you're going bowling. You know, when I go bowling, I ask them to put the little bumper rails down so I can stay, my, my ball can get down the lane. So let me set up some bumper rails for you um, so that you understand what makes a great story. So one is the willingness to take risk. Most people, Vision, when they're telling a story, they don't want to take a risk, so the story has, it has its limits on how high it'll go or how deep it'll go. And when you have that, then you're really not at that part that's gonna to touch my soul. So being willing to take a risk, being clear and concise with your stories. A great story is a show me story, not a tell me story. Now this is the distinction that's the game changer for most. Most people are telling a story, they say, um, so let me just share with you a little bit of my story and I'll tell you and then I'll show you. So as I was building my life, um, there was a time in my life that was very difficult, it was very challenging, true story, very difficult, very challenging, very uncomfortable. I didn't have a lot of money, um, I didn't have a lot of hope and things just looked dismal. At some point I had to turn my life around, at some point I made the decision that life had to get better. I'm telling you that, it's decent, you learn about me. Then if I were to show you that story, I would say, Six days a week, I had to eat beans and leaves. I had to find money in the crevices and the corners of my couch so that I can get my son. There were times when my heart would beat fast just at, what am I gonna have tomorrow? At some point, I got sick and tired of my own story. Is this gonna be my future? No, I can't handle it. Notice the difference in that second story. Wow. I completely see that. I just painted a picture, same story. Mm -hmm. Now the second one, when you show a story, it's gonna require more of you. It's gonna require you to find the colors. What were you thinking? What were you experiencing? What was going on in your head? Instead of telling me you look for money, turn and point. Now this is anywhere, this is anywhere you are doing anything, I promise you, you become a great storyteller and you will captivate your audience no matter what you're doing. I've captivated investors, I've captivated students, I've captivated educators because I was willing to show the story. I call it unpacking the story vision. Being willing to tell me what were you thinking, what were you feeling, what were you seeing. Think about a story as an oral movie. And so in an oral movie, think when you're looking at a movie, the first thing they do is they identify what state of time it is. Is it futuristic? Is it in the now? Was it back in the day? You notice that based on what people are wearing, how they're talking. So paint that picture for me. Take me to that environment. Set the backdrop up for me. Show me what you're going through. Instead of saying I was angry, you can tell me you were angry. But when you say the hair on the back of my neck was standing, I felt the fumes exiting my nose. I thought that my chest was going to pop and I was gonna say something that I'd regret forever. Ooh, you just showed me you were angry. Take that extra time to unpack it. Why will most people not do that? Because it requires a level of vulnerability that we're not willing to share. Myth number two is that abundance is singularly focused on possessions and money. Right? That's, we, we, it's all about what you drive, what you live in, how much money you make. When in fact, it couldn't be further from the truth. Wealth is possessions and money. Abundance is a 360 experience. Abundance is a 360 experience. True abundance. True abundance is your health. Because if you don't have great health, life does not feel good. Abundance is relationship, and at the end of your life, literally, you will measure the quality of your life by the quality of the relationships you have. All the other stuff will fall away. That promotion you're thinking about, you're wondering about that race, it will fall away in the area of importance when you get to the end of your life. You will begin to look at the quality of your relationships, how are your children relating to you, how are your siblings relating to you, do you have love in your life? You literally will start looking at relationships at a higher level as you get older. So when you mind them now, you take care of them. And I know that for a fact, I have a friend who's, who's worth $14 billion, billion with a B, 
He was just partying at my house all night long, wouldn't leave, four in the morning, go home. And he flew in from Canada to go to my New Year's party because he loves my family connection. And he doesn't have one. He is financially wealthy. He's relationship broke. Does that make sense? Abundance is a 360 experience. It's about relationships. It's about health. It's about your spiritual groundness. That doesn't mean you have a religious origin. It's about can you release? Can you forgive? Can you let go? Can you be still? Do you meditate? Do you have time with yourself? That has a lot to do with the quality of your life.